if the answer was God, the question would be different. It's really that simple. I mean, you know, they, they like to hide their God behind vacillating ephemeral definitions and pretend that equals up to a conundrum, but it doesn't. They go into the debate playing for a tie because they know there's no fucking way you're going to convince an atheist that your brand of bullshit smells better than the last one. So the best they can hope for is a stalemate where technically they've crafted a definition of God watertight enough to survive until somebody changes the subject. And even then, they're going to fail more often than they succeed. But even that framing obscures the truth, right? Because if God existed, we wouldn't be asking shit like, do things that didn't begin to exist need a cause? And if you believe in a God and you're wrong, what have you lost? Hell, we wouldn't even be asking questions like, is there a God? We'd be asking questions like, why do churches burn down so much less often than other buildings? Why do poor people with sick kids win the lottery so damn much? And how the hell did that airplane just waft safely to the ground like a leaf? We wouldn't need to ask if God existed. We would need to ask which God existed. Hell, we probably wouldn't even have to ask that. I mean, think about the insurance companies and shit. Right? Like if prayer worked, they'd have figured it out in time to charge atheists more for their policies. Casinos would have rules against praying at the table. Scientists would have to account for the miracle factor in their calculations. And yet here we are ignoring all of that shit and asking exactly the same sorts of questions you would expect us to be asking if there was no God. Now, of course, even the armchair apologist is ready for arguments along these lines, right? They'll talk about the untestability of God for reasons they can never adequately explain their God wants us to have the ability to believe in him or not believe in him as we choose. It's so fucking weird because he's not like that about anything else, just himself. He doesn't offer us the option to not believe in gravity or light speed or food poisoning. In fact, the only thing in the entire universe that he wants to leave us free to believe in or not believe in is himself, which is all the weirder when you consider that his existence is, as they'll tell you, the most important thing to know about. But okay, but whatever. Let's sidestep that absurdity for a minute and just follow their trail of desperate illogic. For whatever reason, God wants to be coy and our feeble brains can't comprehend his purposes. Fine. So given that imperative, he can't just go around confirming his existence to every statistical analyst who happens upon a data set. God knows when he's being tested, so he doesn't miracle when people are looking. What's more, since we track pretty much all the dead people nowadays, he can't risk leaving a tainted data set around for later, so he can't really answer any prayers. Or uh, if he does, he has to do so entirely at random so as not to provide incontrovertible evidence that he exists, thus robbing us of the ability to choose to burn in hell forever. It's important. It's a very important that we have that. Of course, none of this shit stops him from claiming that God reached down and miraculously restarted the heart of everybody who ever recovered within a hundred feet of a nun. But even if we set that shit aside, we have a situation where God, in his desperate effort to maintain plausible deniability of his own fucking existence, has castrated his omnipotence. I, I mean, look, any action he takes is going to alter statistics a little bit, so... As our ability to analyze the data gets better and better, he's going to have to miracle less and less. What's more, since we can look at data sets from the past, like, like, like we could compare hospital records from the 1800s in Christian and non-Christian countries or something like that, and since God knew we'd eventually get there, he had to stop miracling to any substantial degree the second we started keeping records. Think about what a useless, paranoid God they've created for themselves. His inexplicable timidity has rendered him impotent. And now, at least statistically speaking, he's indistinguishable from non-existent. Of course, as flawed and unimpressive as indistinguishable from non-existent is when it comes to objects of divine adulation, it was also the point. Right? Because the reality actually is non-existent, and the degree that their God deviates from that is the degree to which we can prove that he doesn't exist. <laughs>